In this video, I show you how to configure Auto Swift in Mixer mode inside Reaper. The first step is to select the DAW that we are going to work with. Launch Auto Swift before launching Reaper. Go to Preferences and then click the Mixer tab. Audio Swift creates three virtual MIDI ports. In Mixer mode, Audio Swift 1 or port 1 is used for your primary DAW. Audio Swift 2 or port 2 is for your secondary DAW in case you work with another one like Ableton Live. Audio Swift 3 is only used with the rest of the controller modes. In this case, we are only working with Reaper, so we are going to select it as our primary DAW on port 1. Close the window. The second step is to tell Reaper that we want to use Audio Swift as a control surface. Open Reaper and click Preferences. At the Preferences window, go to Console OSC Web and then click Add. Select Mackey Control Universal as the control surface mode. At MIDI input, select Audio Swift 1 if Reaper is going to be your primary DAW. If it is not, select Audio Swift 2 instead. Assign the output port to be the same as the input. Click OK. Again, at the Preferences window, go to MIDI Devices. Make sure that Audio Swift port 1 and 2 are disabled at the MIDI Input section and also at the MIDI Output section. Now go to Audio Swift and let's open the console window. I'm going to click the star so the window will always be on top. Make sure you're on Mixer mode. At the bottom bar, there is a menu where you select the current DAW you want to control. These are the same two DAWs that you set before at the Preferences window, and you can switch between them. The middle area shows the current view you are working on. With a group of parameters, you can control with the trackpad. In this case, I'm in the first view, and I can control a fader, plus the solo, mute, and arm record button. To learn the sounds over the trackpad, let's open the trackpad window. In this utility window, we'll see where are our fingers and we can know the size of each zone in our trackpad. With a little practice, moving through the zones will be easy to you. The left and right areas of the trackpad are for changing between the views and moving from one track to the other by just tapping the trackpad with only one finger. The middle section is where you control the desired parameter and it depends on the view you have chosen. Select the first track in your project. Turn on the console with a four fingers tap. Select view one by tapping the number one. To move the fader of the selected track, use the tip of one finger and slide it up or down inside the fader area. The corresponding fader will move on screen. Notice that the movements are relative, meaning that it doesn't matter if you begin at the bottom of the trackpad or at the top level, the fader will start moving from its last position following your finger direction. Also notice that once you start moving inside the fader zone, you won't need to worry if you accidentally get out of the zone. The selected fader will still move. When you finish, press the escape key or double tap the bottom right corner. It's a good practice to turn off the console right away when you finish using the controller to avoid moving a fader when you really want to move the mouse pointer instead. Let's turn on the console again. If you press the Option key in your keyboard when moving the fader, it will reset to its default value of 0 dB. If you keep pressed the Command key, the fader will move more slowly for fine tuning. You can also change the sensitivity of the fader by going to Preferences, Mixer tab, and move this slider horizontally. To solo the track, tap with one finger over the letter S. To mute the track, tap over the M. To arm for record the track, tap over the R. To control the next track, as you saw here, tap over the left and right triangles. If you need to do a big jump to another track, you have two options. By tapping over the triangles while pressing the control key, it will move to the first track of the next A channels back. The second option is by turning off the console, scroll with your trackpad to the desired track and select it. Turn on the console again and start moving the fader. Let's see another views. Turn on the console and tap over the view number two. You now have access to the fader plus the panning. 
Move up your finger inside the pencil and the knob will turn to the right. Move down and it will turn to the left. Keep pressing the Option key and move the penny. It will go to the center. Now tap over the number 3. View 3 lets you move two tracks at the same time. I tend to use my index and ring fingers for this. Tap over the left and right triangles and it will jump to the next two tracks. Press the Option key while moving your fingers and the faders will be set at 0 dB. Press the Command key for fine tuning. I have shown you the first three basic views in mixer mode. There are two more. View 5 is for the master fader and view 6 for the jog wheel. View 4 for the sense is not supported in Reaper. They are all accessible by using one finger tap over the bottom right area of the trackpad. But before we need to enable them at the preferences window, mixer tap. Here you enable only the views you want to use. I'm going to check the master fader and the jog wheel. Close the window. Turn on the console, tap only once over the bottom right area where the star is, and you'll select the first view you enabled on the preferences window. Tap again and it will switch to the next one. Remember that if you do a quick double tap in this area, instead of changing the view, you'll turn off the console. Tap over the bottom right zone again to switch to the master fader view. This lets you control directly the master fader. Press the Option key and it will move to 0 dB. Tap one more time the bottom right and you'll change to the jog wheel. With only one finger, start moving in circles around the center of the trackpad. The playhead will move through the timeline. If for some reason the playhead doesn't move, press one time the S key in your keyboard. Also, the S key will let you move the playhead smoothly in some cases. You can start moving your finger anywhere inside the middle area of the trackpad as long as the movements are in circles around the center. If you don't lift the finger, you can even go outside the middle area and it's still going to work. It's time to talk about the transport controls. In AudioSwift, there are several keyboard shortcuts that are used for transport control when the console is on or when the console is the key window on screen. You can either use them, or if you prefer, you can use the regular transport shortcuts on your DAW and then turn on the console for controlling the fader, panning, and so on. Like in your DAW, to play the music, use the space bar. Press it again, and the playhead will pause. You can change the behavior of the space bar to let the playhead return to its initial position by going to Preferences window, Mixer tab, and uncheck where it says Space bar works as play pause button. The letters from Q to Y in your keyboard are for the rest of transport controls. Q moves the playhead to the next marker to the left. W is the stop button. E is another play button. The R is the record button. T is for enable the cycle mode. And Y moves the playhead to the next marker to the right. If you have a MacBook Pro with touch bar, you will also see the transport controls displayed on it. It's good to mention that once you have configured the mixer mode in your DAW, both touch bar and keyboard transport controls are also accessible when you're working on the trigger, scale, and XY controller modes. With AudioSwift, you can automate the faders and the panning in Reaper. First, select in your DAW an automation mode. I'm going to select Touch. Hit Play and start moving a fader. Once you release the finger, the fader will return to its original position. You can even automate two faders at the same time. Faders in touch mode will work this way. Panning, on the other hand, will return to its initial position if you stop moving your finger and even if you haven't released it from the trackpad. Use another automation mode if you want to lift the pan on its new position. There are two important issues to know when working with AudioSwift and Reaper. The first one is that it could happen that two or more tracks are selected in a row by mistake when you try to jump from one track to the other with AudioSwift, causing to control all the highlighter tracks at the same time. This could happen if you tap the trackpad too quickly, especially when working with two tracks view. So I recommend to not tap the trackpad really fast. The other issue is that when your Mac goes to sleep, it could happen that the controllers don't work right in Reaper 
when you start using your Mac again. To solve this, just go to Reaper's Preferences Settings, then Console OSC Web, and click the Audio Swift configuration. Click OK and OK, and Reaper will recognize the controller again. That's all for this tutorial. Please watch the rest of the videos on how to use AudioSwift in other controller modes. Thanks for watching.